Good afternoon folks. Welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. Um, in the last video, I tried to introduce the concept of the quantum numbers. I said they were like on a, on a set of address lines for every given electron in an atom. It's quite complex stuff. I totally agree. So I thought what I'd try and do today is a sort of alternative presentation of the same ideas. Pretty much exactly the same ideas. We had our four quantum numbers. Um, N, L, M, L, and M, S. They have four different functions. This one here, N, your principal quantum number. This tells you which energy level, well, it's like which layer. You know when we used to draw electrons like this? Remember the easy days? Do, 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 do. Well, that's which layer you're dealing with. So which energy level you're dealing with. L had a different function. L tells you what shape of space you will find the electrons in. Now, L is a number, that's not a shape, but uh, for the values of L, we have different shapes of space. We also give them, slightly annoyingly, letters as well. So that's an S orbital, P orbital, a D orbital, and you're required to know that F orbitals do exist. S, P, D, and F. So basically you have a little table in your head and when you see a value of L, you go, oh yeah, that corresponds to a P orbital and it's such and such a shape, which we'll show you later on. ML tells you how many pairs of electrons there are in a particular type of orbital. And it has numbers but the numbers are not the answer. The number of values that you have is the answer. So if ML is zero, that is a single value, so that will be one pair of electrons. If ML is negative one, zero, one, one, that is three pairs of electrons. Lastly, what's the point of this one? The spin magnetic spin quantum number. Well. This is this is to keep one of the, the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics happy. It enables you to distinguish between each electron in a pair. So we've got the, coming from the top down, we've got the energy level you're dealing with, they've got the type of orbitals that you can find in that energy level, the shape of them, and their names. They've got, within one of these, this will tell you how many pairs of electrons you can fit. And lastly, this one here, which enables you to distinguish between each electron in a pair. Um, just in blue here, we can have the values. Uh, N starts at one, and two, and three goes up from there. L was equal to zero up to n minus one. So if n was three, for example, then L could be zero, one, or two. ML was the negative of this, negative L, up through zero, up to positive L. So if L equals two, for example, then we can have negative 2 for ML, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So that's five values, so that would be five pairs of electrons. And lastly, this one is, just for a change, nice and simple, it's positive a half or negative a half for the two electrons involved. I'm going to pause the video there, and I'm going to get a pre-prepared grid, and we'll try and see how this works for some real electrons in terms of the values of their quantum numbers. If it'll let me pause the video, that's. Now, remember back in the old days, let's pick, a, let's pick an element at random. Let's go with neon. Neon has 10 electrons, of course. And we would previously have drawn these 10 electrons as one layer here. Don't worry about the nucleus. We'll leave that to the physics guys and girls. Um, so then our layer of electrons would have two electrons. And then the outer 
we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because it's a group eight, group zero, whatever you want to call them. It's a noble gas. Right. How does that match up to this version? Well, let's start with the first layer of electrons. And if it's the first layer of electrons, then N is 1. Now if N is 1, that means L must be 0 up to N minus 1, so that's just 0. ML was negative this through 0 up to positive this. Again, quite restricted, it's just going to be that. And MS is just plus a half for one of these electrons and minus a half for the other electron. So that's us done. That's these two that those are the quantum numbers for these two electrons in the first layer. Oh look, that's why the first layer can only hold two electrons. We're done with the first layer. Let's move on to the second layer. Now, if n is now 2, l can be 0, and l can be 1, because l can be 0 up to n minus 1, and n is 2. Uh, ML, let's address ML for this one here, uh, we're stuck at 0 as well. And we can have two values for MS. We can have positive a half, and we can have negative a half. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just going to carry on there, sorry. Um, if we're, we're done now for these ones, as it were, uh, but what about this value of L? Well, ML can be negative 1, 0, and plus 1. So let's set ML to be negative 1. And for this value, you can have plus a half, and you can have minus a half. Now we'll change up to L being 0. So, oh, sorry, I apologize. We will change up to ML being 0. And we can have plus a half, and minus a half. And lastly, Let's have the third value for ML, which is plus one. And you can have plus a half, minus a half. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in the second energy level. That is our eight electrons. However, you notice now, at advanced higher level, we are sort of splitting this into two different types of orbital. Now, last time I said L explained the type of our orbital. We had a little table of values for L and the orbital type. When L is 0, it's an S orbital. When L is 1, it's a P orbital. So if we were to do some classifications, we would see that all these guys here, in other words, the first layer, or S orbitals. When we move into the second layer, we can see that these two electrons are in an S orbital as well, but these six electrons are in three different P orbitals. So these ones here are all in P orbitals. Hopefully that was slightly clearer than before. I'm going to stop the video there. We've done enough. Thank you for listening. In the next video, I'm going to talk about a more efficient way of representing uh, electron arrangements than this. Remember, we used to do 2, 8, 6. Well, we've just learned that these 8 are not equivalent to each other. We're going to have to subdivide these. So there's a better way of writing electron configurations than our old-fashioned way. Thanks for listening.